Says they saw him uh, from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dream. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dream. Uh, this is referring to Yusuf alayhi salam. We're going to go into this a little bit more. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kala hal alamtu. Ma fa alam tu bi Yusufa wa akihi it antum jahilun. He said, "Know you how he dealt with Joseph?" and his brother, not knowing what you were doing. This is a little commentary. The Arabic words, They did not understand, or they didn't know what they was doing. In this case, uh, they did not understand or you didn't know what you was doing. Uh, maybe very appropriately mean three things. First, we were comforting Joseph and his brother. We're quite unaware of this, that a revelation was being sent to him. Second, you will let them uh, know of all this evil act of theirs in such circumstances that they can never even imagine. They can imagine you to be. Thirdly, today they are committing an evil act, but they do not know its future consequences. There's another accompanying, this is from, uh, the other was uh, Sayyid Qutb, uh, the other was Balana uh, Mauduri. And this one is uh, this is from another Tafsir, Sayyid Qutb here. Bismillah ar-Rahim. La Tarkabuna. Tabakan and Tabaki, you shall surely travel from stage to stage. That you shall certainly ride stage after stage. That is to say, you will pass from one stage of suffering to another, to what has been predestined for you. The Quran uses the term ride to denote 
the ongoing of various stages of suffering. Ride is frequently used in Arabic to signify the passage through risk and difficulty. This uses, uh, this usage, usage suggests that difficulties and risks are like horses or mules to be ridden. Each one will take the riders, the stage predestined for it and for them. Thus each one will deliver them to a new stage which is again predetermined in the same way as universal stages. We're here with Yusuf again and uh, Yusuf and his brothers. As I said uh, before, I like the story of Yusuf because you can stay on it for a long time. But we're on it for a particular reason, especially the gate today. We said that this story has a happy ending. It's hard to leave happy endings where most of the world don't have uh, happy endings. Even, you know, in the scriptural world, you see uh, that uh, truth tellers, prophets, messengers, all these good people came to people time after time and they just looked up and they, sometimes they just put cloth over their head, they just did the um yum sum yum boop boop thing, deaf, dumb, and blind. I mean, and so, and they don't hardly pay no attention. This is like, you know what we say about the time we're in now? We say this is scripturalism on steroids. And I'll get into it. This time, I mean today, is scripturalism on steroids. And uh, today we'll also get to the points we've been working toward for quite some time. If you remember, we said in several lectures before, and we wrote it down, uh, that uh, we wrote a good part in history for ourselves, but we wrote a good part in history for other people too. This been around. We wrote a good part in there for them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The combination of all the parts. Remember, this is what I'm talking about when uh, uh, Yusuf said to his brothers, hey man, they, uh, it's all right, uh, you know, no reproach this day. And then they got to, oh, we did this, don't worry about that. That's all, uh, you know, Allah going to forgive you. Allah is going to give you uh, mercy. He knows where you was coming from, and you did what you did, and you didn't know what you was doing no way. You know, uh, about shaitan. I wanted to get to this a little later, but I, I'll get to it now. Remember, Shaitan uh, let's see what the, what Iblis says. Iblis said, My Lord, give me then respite till the day the day it arranged. Here's what Shaitan is saying. Kala Rabbi Fa'amdiri ila yawmin yab'athuna. Lady of me. This is a blue saying. Kala Rabbi. The shaitan is not talking crazy like uh, he's saying, my Lord. This is what you got to see. <laughs> see, a lot of people pass that. They give shaitan, they, oh man, they go running around that he he do this, he do that, and Allah tell you, and he tells you himself. Just to regress a minute. 
And the devil will say when the matter is decided, surely Allah promised you a promise of truth. I promised you, but I lied to you. I had no authority over you except that I called you and you obeyed me. So blame me not, but blame yourself. I cannot come to your help, nor can you come to mine. I deny your act of associating me with the law. The, the Quran uses that, that mushrik and all of that. I deny, the devil going to say, when it's all over, you can see him now. He's a double cross and snitch boy. He just, just look at him. You listen to me? Why well, I deny it. I, I lied to you. The, the book, you got a book. What does the book say? It books say I am deceptive. I am a liar. I'm going to come to you with everything you can in front of you, behind you, on all the sides, you know. And then I told you that, uh, that I, I'm not going to bow down to you. I bow down to Allah. Because it says, rub me, right? I'm rejecting you and your word. And you here made out of whatever it is, clay, and I'm made out of fire. No, 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 no. You listen to me? Oh my goodness. You committed shirk. Because that's what the crime said to you. You committed shirk. You associated me with a lot. Oh man. Good God. What are we going to do now? The shaitan, you can hear him acting the fool. Here he goes, says, Kala, Rabbi. This is in the 39th. Verse 37 and 39. He's constantly saying, Rabbi, my Lord. So therefore, now you have to remember, Shaitan, Iblis, all that crew, you know, uh, they all run together and they all support each other. Now, The Quran says that, that you have been led astray by Shaitan. Basically, it just say you listened to Shaitan and you didn't know what you were doing. They did not understand. They didn't understand. They didn't understand what they're doing. Okay. Quran also is very clear. I only created men and men that they serve me. So, in this case, in this rendition, the only one that's aware of what's going on is Yusuf. Right? From the very beginning. Uh, let me find it here. And from the very beginning, he's got a clear message. Well, we can remember that Allah uh, taught him, Thus will thy Lord choose thee and teach thee the interpretation of stories and events and perfect, and perfect his favor to thee and to thy posterity of Jacob, and to the posterity of Jacob, even as he perfected it to thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and aforetime. For thou knowest is full of knowledge and wisdom. So, Rabbuka Wayah Limuna, but no, Wayah Limuna, to you. Amen. Tahwil al Hadith, yeah. That is. Thus, thy Lord chose thee and teach the interpretation of stories and events. That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected Yusuf specifically for a mission. And Allah tells him the mission from Yom Street. 
Then his father, he tells his father, and his father said, don't tell your brothers, boy, because that crew, they already acting funny with you and your brother. So uh, just keep it to yourself. Of course, he just blurted it out. Why? Because there's a whole narration going on. And this narration is arranged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everybody in this narration is going to play a part. They don't have to know what part they're playing. But they will play their part. So it goes on to say uh, that uh, I but fulfilled toward you the duties of my Lord's mission. Sincere is my advice to you, and I know from Allah something that you know not. Do you wonder that there had come to you a message from your Lord through a man of your own people to warn you so that you may fear Allah and happily receive mercy. This is one of the prophets here. Well, first they say, Ah, see, thou art an imbecile, and we think thou art a liar. So, he said, O oh, my people, I am no imbecile, but I am a messenger from the Lord and cherisher of the world. I but fulfill toward you the duties of my Lord's mission. I am to you a sincere and trustworthy advisor. Now, St. Tom said the same thing. I can do it. Oh, boy. You can, you can count on me. Do you wonder that there had come to you a message from your Lord through a man of your own people to warn you, call in remembrance that he made you inheritors after the people of Noah and he gave you stature tall among nations. The stature tall among nations is the key to what we're talking about today. It's about the Negro. And it's, like I said, this is scripture on steroids. That's what it is. If everybody had been reading even a section, they went through all of this over and over again, and it's so repetitive, it's unbelievable. That the people always said, man, you just like us. You can't, you, you're speaking the same language, talking the same talk. And then you want us to do something else. You want us to leave what we've been worshiping and come to something else. The Negro in America has been worshiping the white man. No, because the white man has authority. Uh, the white man has a, it's almost like the way Nimrod used to talk. The white man, as far as the Negro is looking, has authority and power to dispense rewards and punishment. He has, that's, that's what he do. And everybody can see that. And then he dazzles the people with all the little stuff he got. And they go for it. And then, remember the people, this is what we want everybody to understand. You, the people we're talking to, are human beings. And according to scripture, you're going to act like a human being. Except a very, very minute percentage. Just think of the percentage. That, uh, you know what I mean. Uh, you get a chance to look in the paradise and you say, oh man, everybody's going to be there. Then they show you what's around them. Why did this? I don't think nobody going to make that, right? right? So then they show you the hellfire. Then 
And you look over in there and you say, oh man, ain't nobody gonna go there. Then they show you what's surrounding that. The hellfire. So, uh, <laughs> I know ain't nobody hardly gonna, with all the stuff surrounding it. Both paradise, right? And the hellfire. So the way it's talking is everybody going over here. Because what's surrounding it? What they are being, what they're seeing and tasting and touching, the most of the people are going there. Unless Allah forgive them and Allah is a Rahman, a Rahim, he's also Al Ghafur Rahim. So everybody have hope, but when you look at what's surrounding the people, oh my goodness. Now there's a few things we want to keep in mind. A lot of this is personal because we talked about years ago not wanting to be in heaven all by ourselves. That's where East Oakland Enterprises came in. That we said, hey, it was really strange because imagine one year in 65 to 66, you looking at all the big pretty cars and it was a, when we would go over to San Francisco and we'd see all them pretty Cadillacs going up and down Fillmore, that's in Fillmore, it's a black neighborhood, of course, because we'd go to the temple over there. Because Oakland's temple wasn't no good. So we go over there, and I take Carlo the brothers, sometimes just a couple of us. They'd be smoking weed all over. Now I was getting contact. I didn't smoke weed, but I know from what I, I was contact all the way over and all the way back. But anyway, it was a good lecture for them, 65, 66. It was, it was nice. In fact, Bernard Cushman was a minister over there. Y'all probably heard it. Bernard Cushman, our Savior has arrived. This is the one by Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so he brought him to Phoenix with him because the lamb moved to Phoenix because he had to, to get out of that cold weather. Anyway, heaven and hell alone. Imagine within one or two years. Now, my partners. They don't know what they're doing. This whole scenario is arranged by Shaitan and the servants, the servants. I'm telling you, from back in the early 60s, when I went 